Hey everybody, welcome to God Quest. I'm delighted that you're here with us. We're in for a special treat today. I've got a special guest, Bishop Wade Bass. So get ready, it's gonna be a great conversation today. Well, you're at God Quest. We're on a journey to see what God will do in our life and what God is doing where you are and what God is doing in the earth. And I am delighted, as I've already stated, to have with us today on God Quest uh, a dear friend of ours for many, many years, uh, a tremendous, outstanding <clears throat> preacher of the gospel, a Bible teacher, and over the last number of years has stepped into a uh, uh, a new level of ministry on a global scale uh, that is unprecedented. And uh, Bishop Wade Bass, we are delighted you're on God Quest today. Thank you. Quite a privilege. Didn't expect this to happen. <laughs> uh, he was with us last night, preached a tremendous message that, uh, let me just kind of hit on that a moment. Uh, if you are in dire circumstances, <laughs> in less than optimal a condition, he preached about the self-sufficient one uh, who sprang out of a dry ground. Yes. The soil, you said, added nothing to him. It added nothing to him. So it didn't really matter where he was. <laughs> and I, I get a feeling that that revelation that you preached last night is the impetus of what, uh, of so much of what you're involved in. Uh, he talked about since he is the self-sufficient one, you just get him anywhere. Right. And he will work. Absolutely. And it will grow. So, uh, <clears throat> Bishop, talk to us. Talk to us about, uh, we'll get to Africa and India and the things that are happening, but what is your philosophy of revival? Because you're seeing you're seeing things break loose uh, that, are, that are unprecedented in some regard. There's something driving that. We'll, we'll unpack that. I don't know that I can even put it in words um, except to say that uh, one of the driving forces behind my entire ministry has been the Word of God. Uh, I have been so dependent upon the book and the moving of the Holy Ghost, trusting that God would help us in whatever endeavor that we're involved in. But one of the things I have noted in recent years is back to the basics of just preaching the doctrine. This is one of the areas in reality that I feel we are probably weak in, even in the United States. And I'm not sure what has created that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think possibly our focus a lot on issues, and I'm talking not just uh, standards or guidelines, yeah. I'm talking about uh, social is issues and people's personal issues that we get so caught up in trying to address address those areas that we fail to realize how important the power of the doctrine is. And this is what is really, I'm seeing, drive revival uh, in the areas that God has, the doors that God has opened in different parts of the world, is we're going in there with doctrine and that is what's causing the explosion of revival and people coming into the truth. So I guess if you ask for a particular philosophy, Paul said, preach the word. <laughs> preach the word. And, I love it. You know, I, I, I see. You got that from your dad. I got it from my dad. Your dad was uh, my dad quite the Bible me, teacher. Yes. He gave me the love for the word of God. And he was quite a scriptorian. He yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not an old guy. But I had the privilege of, uh, of being, I was the youth pastor at the time here at the church I now pastor, mm -hmm. and he came as an elder. And I remember this, this older man, just, it was rolling. Yes, it he would. was a theologian. He would, he would quote more scriptures in one message than most would quote in six months of preaching. <laughs> but that well, was him. It, it, that's, that's in your DNA. Yeah. But it fits with what you preached last night. What you preached last night, I mean, it was the mighty God of Christ. It was Jesus' name, baptism. It was, it was the essentiality of the Holy Ghost, all wrapped in, in one. But it was a, it was a doctrinal, expositional, and 
so many preachers, and I'm not denigrating preachers. I love preaching. Uh, I love preachers. I love preaching. Sometimes there there's a tendency to preach for response. Yeah. Uh, but really, there's nothing that gets the right response like doctrinal preaching. Yeah, absolutely. Because a rah rah hallelujah is not near as important as the response at an altar or at a, a baptismal thing. Absolutely. So I, I will admit I am a response preacher. I want to see people say, "Well, I'm done <laughs> preaching." Well, this is working. It's yeah. it's working uh, in your ministry. Uh, for those of you that may not be aware. Bishop Bass, after pastoring for many years in Florida, uh, left and began to pour into churches. Uh, there's a uniqueness. I, I don't know if I don't know if you were in a, you know everybody tries to figure out which of the fivefold ministry. I, I don't know if you were an evangelist. I don't know if you were a, a, a prophet. I don't know if you were a teacher, but <clears throat> kind of on the on the sideline watching and having the benefit of you coming numerous times uh, after you left. Uh, the, the church in Florida, coming in as a seasoned pastor, uh, a man of God, uh, a biblical scholar who loved the word of God, but also having been a pastor, knowing what a church needs. It was a different thing. It, yes, it was evangelistic. Yes, it was prophetic. Yes, it was apostolic. But but there was, I, I think it was like a combination of things. Is that yeah. Does that fit in any way with how well, you were feeling? Absolutely. Well, see, essentially, <clears throat> when I approach the pulpit, I have three things in mind. This message needs to have something for the church in it. Okay. It needs to have something for the center, and it needs to address the sin issue. Those are three major areas, and I may go to the pulpit and preach and it may seem like I'm largely preaching to the church, but before I'm finished, yeah. I'm going to move it toward that center. I'm going to move it toward the, the visitor that's sitting there and connect what I have been preaching to the church to where they are. Yeah. And that's been one of the things that I have striven to accomplish in the past number of years. Well, you, you begin to impact the apostolic movement immediately in a way that in your local setting— Obviously, you were a conference preacher. You, I mean, I knew your name and knew you from a distance from Bible conferences uh, when I was a much younger preacher. Uh, but then as you begin to minister across the United States, and then I don't know what the button was that got pushed, but something, you, you stepped onto a global uh, platform where God began to use you uh, in uh, I know there was strong work that you were doing in the Philippines and then India. We'll talk about that. And then Africa, and India and Africa have have just opened up in incredible ways. God, obviously, God's God's been working for many years in these regions, but there is a ramping up. I see that is happening, and you are one of the leading voices that are that are that are stepping in uh, and this doctrinal focus, this. We have this idea that doctrinal preaching and teaching is boring or no, dead. No, no. <laughs> it's not no, at all. No. Some of the most exciting times of my, of my, uh, of trying to preach and teach, I, I get so overwhelmed at the beauty of this tremendous message and this tremendous truth. Um, to, to address real quick what you were saying with regards to the shift or the change, I've, I've traveled a lot through the years from the 80s mm -hmm. uh, in, in various mission fields, uh, South America, Central America, Caribbean. Um, I've been in some parts of Georgia, right here yep. in the U.S. and, and <laughs> Kentucky. But, but he the, said it, not me. <laughs> but the reality is that I feel like a lot of my experience there, which was with American missionaries, also helped me to understand more so the mission field so that now where I'm working, I'm really not connected with any American missionary, right. but all of the work that we're doing overseas now are with nationals. These are with men who are leaders in their own right, and they have come to the knowledge of truth. They've embraced A the hunger truth. for doctrine. A hunger for doctrine. Uh, if you could have been in Zambia a few days ago, 
when I'm teaching on the Godhead. Okay, you're teaching. You're teaching. These are shepherds' symposia. Right. Uh, right. Unpack that so the audience knows okay. in case the, they, they're the, not aware the of what's going on. Shepherd's symposium uh, is a burden that was birthed in my heart as a result of conversations that I had with men who carried the same vision and the burden that I have for mission field. And out of our conversations was born the concept or the idea of the Shepherd Symposium. And essentially what it is, it's a training conference for yeah. ministers. So rather than doing crusades, which I'm not against, right. uh, it, but, but we're focusing on the ministry. So one of the things I have noted through the years uh, in many third world countries, there's a lot of men that have zeal, they have passion, they have burden, but they haven't had any training. They don't have the the rudiments of this They've, never, they've never been given the opportunity. Never been given the opportunity and have never been given the tools. So we develop, uh, so far we've developed two conferences. One we call uh, Basic Ministerial Concepts or practical ministerial concepts. And the other one we call apostolic doctrine. So basic concepts deals with the man, his integrity, his character, his calling, his work in the ministry, his family, uh, things such so as... So le that's a leadership right. focus. It's, a, it's more of a leadership focus, but okay. we're, we go from the man over a three-day period to the kingdom. Okay. So we start with the man, his own personal life. We progress to his message, uh, the the nuts and bolts of teaching and preaching, how to study, how to prepare a message. Incredible. Um, you know, putting all these things in order. And then ultimately on the third day, we reach for the kingdom, which deals with mission and evangelism and ministerial relationships and how to create a growth uh, climate in your church. So we deal with that on the basic side, on the doctrinal so side. We could use some indigenous pastoral training in the United States as well. <laughs> well, I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that. And I'm being told, please bring it here. And so that is that's is part of the of the future plans, is to do maybe one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast in future years. Awesome. Um, but then the doctrinal side, uh, we deal with four main doctrines. Okay. The Godhead, plan of salvation, stewardship, and then holiness and separation. Okay, and so... Those four topics in that particular genre of the Shepherd's Camp, am I correct in that there is some kind of invitation that is given? You're working with some guys on the ground there, and this is not this is not all of my buddies in my organization. Right. This is for whosoever will. It's right, a scattering of the seed. Exactly. So these these are not even necessarily apostolic men that are coming exactly. and women that are coming to exactly. this. Exactly. No, we have. We have other uh, people of other persuasions that do come to our sessions, and when they're there and they hear doctrine, they they get the revelation. So tell them about tell them about the the key man uh, on this last shepherd symposium. Well, one of the what happened on that symposium it was really the practical side. Okay. But we felt very, very strongly because we found out that there would be a number of men there that were other, of other beliefs, other persuasions. And so we decided we would do a lesson on the Godhead and we would do a lesson on the plan of salvation. We would insert that on the second day. So this man had been sitting on the front row. He was, he's, he's been a general. He is a, still considered a general in the Zambian army. Uh, he is the face of their uh, National Day of Prayer. He has worked hand-in-hand, -hand personally, one-on-one -on -one with two or three Zambian presidents. He's a man of influence. He's got everybody in Zambia and knows who he is. And he's, he's at, at this symposium. symposium. And so I'm teaching on the Godhead. Well, if you had been there, you would you would have noted that Teaching on doctrine does not have to be boring. <laughs> These men are on the floor screaming, and they're, they're saying, excited. give us more, give us more. Because we're, we're walking them through the various parts of the Godhead and explaining how Jesus Christ is God manifest in flesh and then giving them illustrations where they're on their feet. And I'm <coughs> at, at, at a one-hour point, I knew <coughs> we needed to transition into the plan of salvation. 
And when I did that, uh, they jumped to their feet and said, no, 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 we need more. Give, give us more. So I went another 20, probably 25 minutes <laughs> before I, I uh, moved into the plan of salvation. And I took another 35 or 40 minutes just bouncing through the New Testament on the book of Acts and baptism in Jesus' name. This man sitting on the front pew who has been a preacher in his organization for 28 years, he was born in that organization, was raised up in that organization. When everything was complete, and I turned the service back to Bishop uh, Mwinga, he comes up and asks for the microphone. And he says to the people, he says, you all know who I am. Well, everybody started clapping because yeah. they knew who he was. He's a dignitary. He's a dignitary. Yeah. And he, he was in reality what we called our VIP for that, for that meeting. Yeah. He was brought in as, as a dignitary. And so uh, he begins to talk about how that he has been to seminary. He's got these degrees. He's preached this many years. And, but then he walks over to the edge of the platform and looks at me and he says, but Bishop, but Bishop, you said some things today I've never heard before. Wow. And he said, I said, what? Yeah. And I saw the video. Yeah, I love that. What? He said, and so he said, ladies and gentlemen, I know. He said, I have come here today and I'm going to do what I'm going to do, not because that I'm here with you, but I'm here because I've learned something I never knew before. He said, I know when I do this, I will be excommunicated from my church. And he paused and he said, without much ado, take me to the water. So we baptize him. Oh, I love it. He brings his wife back the next day. We baptize her. I get a text from him yesterday or last night, and it may have been this morning. I get these texts, and I try to keep up with all of them. And he, we were in a service yesterday where they were singing a song, It's All in Him. And he watched the service. And he just texted me this morning. He said, yes, it's all in him. The mighty God is Jesus. So you get those kinds of responses. It just, that was response preaching. That was response preaching. That was response preaching. preaching. So that's, the, that's really uh, what, that's what's winning these men. When these men get the doctrine, it's like Congo. I was in the Congo. We were only supposed to have 400 pastors a day. We wound up with 600 pastors a day, and they're getting the revelation. And we broke into an organization with 1,300 churches, and they are embracing this truth. I just received word about a week and a half ago that the pastors are being baptized. They're teaching their churches, and they're starting to baptize their churches. So it's spreading through this organization with 1,300 churches in it. Amazing. So it's amazing. There is, there is a hunger uh, around the world. Yes, there is. And I would, I would unabashedly say that if there's a philosophy— of ministry that you should embrace, and that is, it's really not a philosophy, it's an old-time pattern. Preach the Word. Preach the Word. The Word of God is alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Whatever you're working on and you're sharpening your skill at, whatever you get, however adept you are at that, there is nothing that is going to work right. like the Word of God. Right. This is a living Real-time example of what God is doing in the earth. Uh, he's on a quest to just see how big God can grow this thing. Brother Bass, we are 100% behind what God Thank is you. doing. You. You're building, helping lead a building in a three-story training center in right. India that India. is nearing completion. Right. And and if you, uh, you're a pastor, you're a leader out there, and you're looking for some ministry to invest in that where you, you really know that it's making a difference. Let me tell you, get a hold of Bishop Bass. There are new doors opening every day, and uh, he and I are in communication. There are so many exciting things that are happening, and uh, much of it is dependent upon support of people that, right. that catch the vision right. because there's more men that want to be trained. There's more of these symposiums. There's more training because these men are connected to other men. Exactly. And the kingdom is growing exponentially. This apostolic doctrine, Jesus' name, baptism, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost is a powerful thing that is working through the believer. So get on this quest. 
Whatever God is calling you and dealing with you, pray about it. Get involved in your local church, in your ministry, whatever context you're in. Build your faith and understand that God is working today. This is not a day for throwing in the towel or backing up. Exactly. It's time to jump in with both feet. Right, absolutely. So, Bishop Bass, thank you for being on God Quest. Mm. You're, you're, you're going to be coming back out this way. We'll do it again, and I can't wait to hear more exciting reports. God bless you. We'll see you next time on God Quest.